Hi, I'm David with General Air. We're going to take a look at Pulse today and how flexible this mode of transfer is. Everyone knows short circuit and some people know axial spray, but the new kid in town is certainly Pulse. So we're going to look at this Millermatic 255 and what makes Pulse so special. This Millermatic 255 can achieve short circuit transfer and this these numbers should look pretty familiar 250 inches per minute 19 volts using a gas like 100% carbon dioxide or 7525. Now if I change my gas over to an 8515 or a 9010 and I just started to turn my wire feed speed up and my voltage up, eventually I would get into a spray transfer. Now the problem with both of these is short circuit has a lot of spatter and it's not very good for thicker material, thicker than about a quarter of an inch. And spray transfer is great, but it's so hot that anything thinner than a quarter of an inch and it's gonna start blowing through. So this machine uses a mode of transfer, and I say that and that's just kind of how the wire gets from the wire to the puddle, with this new thing called pulse. So when I click this button, we go into a pulsing mode. This, the machine's telling me how to set up my leads, and that's all well and good. And over here, it says that we're gonna be using a 9010 Argon CO2 O35 wire. It's really important that the machine knows what gas and wire that we're using, the type of wire and the diameter. Then we see inches per minute, that's our wire feed speed, and that still does the same thing, where it's the amperage, it's the controlling the amperage. The lower this is, the less amperage I have, of course, the thinner material. But over here, we see a little bit different number. We see arc length. Now, that still does control my voltage. I can lower my arc length by turning this down. But here's the cool thing about pulse. If I leave this number in the middle, and I say the middle because the top end is 99, the bottom is zero, so the middle is roughly 50, then the machine is gonna set itself for every single wire feed speed I can put my machine on. Now I can weld all the way down to 14 gauge, all the way up to one inch plate. So let's do a couple of welds using our pulse parameters. We're gonna leave our arc length alone for now. We're just gonna mess with our wire feed speed. I'm gonna see how well this does. All right, we're welding on quarter inch mild steel using an 035 ER70S6 mild steel wire using 9010 Argon CO2 gas. The wire speed is 435 inches per minute. That is per the chart that the Millermatic 255 has inside of it. And our arc length is set at 50. We're just gonna do a 2F fillet weld here and take a look at how good this comes out. We've moved our material thickness down to 1 8 of an inch. Still, everything else is the same other than just the wire feed speed. We're gonna roll that down to 270 inches per minute. Now, my arc length is still set at that middle 50, but again, with pulse, the machine is going to balance our wire feed speed and our voltages. Since pulsing uses many different voltages and different frequencies of the pulse, that is a lot to know there, but Miller makes it simple by having just one knob control. Let's see how this 1 8 inch fillet weld turns out. Now we move down to 14 gauge material and again, haven't touched anything but our wire feed speed. According to the chart on the inside of the machine, it says 215 inches per minute. And I'm just following this chart just to show that this stuff works really well. There's not much guesswork that I have to do as long as I have these in position welds. A little later on, we're gonna do some out of position welds and then we'll really start adjusting the machine and fine tuning it to our likings. So let's see how Pulse does on 14 gauge material. Now we're gonna go back to quarter inch, but now we're gonna go vertical up. This is where the chart no longer really helps us because the chart said 435 inches per minute. Yeah, that was great when gravity was helping us out, but now that gravity's fighting us, we do need to cool our procedures down. So I'm gonna to go to 240 inches per minute. The other thing too is I'm going to lower my arc length. 
By doing this, you are making the arc at the base a little bit narrower. That gives us a lot more control when we're going vertical up. I could be successful if I just left it at 50, but turning the arc length down a few points, I'm going to go to 45, is really going to give me the control I want. We're going back to the 1 8 inch plate. This time, I'm going to go vertical down. I've tried to go vertical up on this. Well, we just have to go too slow and it could burn through this outside corner joint. These are especially tricky, uh, but I'm going to put my machine at 200 inches per minute and I just scrubbed down two points off the arc length. So now we're at 48 just to get a little bit more narrow bead on this joint. Now we're going to do that same vertical down joint with the 14 gauge outside corner joint. I've put my wire feed speed at 175 inches per minute, but this time I've gone quite a bit down with my arc length. I went to 35. So that's a whole 15 points off because again, when I pull that arc length down, that narrows up my bead. All right, that last 14 gauge vertical down did not go very well. Had a lot of spatter and the arc was totally unstable, unusable, but Pulse has another trick up its sleeve. We're going to go into the menu on the 255 and we're going to find the frequency of the pulse. As you can imagine, the pulsing happens at a certain frequency. Well, we're going to turn that up. What that's going to do is it's actually going to narrow the arc in. It's not going to change my arc length, but it's actually going to change the geometry. We're going to turn that up, see if we can smooth the arc out and get a much better weld than this one here, which is covered in spatter. I really want to stretch the legs of this pulse procedure here. So again, we're going to do the quarter inch plate, but this time we're going to go 4F or overhead fillet weld. I have turned my wire feed speed up to 280. A little bit more amperage helps you when you're going overhead. The bead actually wants to suck towards the uh, highest source of heat, which is itself or the arc. Uh, so having a little hotter will actually flatten out the bead. It's a little counterintuitive. I have my arc length set at 47, so it's a little bit tighter just because I'm going to be weaving back and forth. I really don't want a nice wide arc sloshing around. Uh, so let's see how this turns out. You can see with all the welds that we did today how flexible pulse can really be. It is a great mode of transfer and in my opinion this is the wave of the future. Most machines are going to be pulsing machines because of how easy they are to set up and the high quality near spatter free welds that we can get every single time. And with the prices of pulsing machines coming down it's way easy to get one of these in your garage. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe. And if you want more information on general air service and supply, head over to our Facebook page where you can like and follow us there.